The search for the Filipino physicians of distinction continues to honor the memory and legacy of our national hero, Dr. Jose P. Rizal. Award honors outstanding Filipino physicians whose lives and works reflect the ideals of Dr. Jose Rizal. Rizal's tragic first romance with its better delusionment did not adversely affect his studies in the University of Santo Tomas. After finishing the first year of the course in philosophy and letters, he transferred to the medical course, and after graduating with the highest honors from the Ateneo, Rizal had to go to the University of Santo Tomas for higher studies. Say, we wanted you to pursue higher education in the University of Santo Tomas. What? Don't send him to Manila again. He knows everything. If he gets to know more, the Spaniard will cut his head. Don Francisco kept quiet and told Pasiano to accompany his younger brother to Manila. Accompany your younger brother to go in Manila. Yes, father. I will send him to Manila. Despite their mother's tears, Jose Rizal himself was surprised why his mother, who was a woman of education and culture, should object to his desire for the University of Education. Years later, he wrote in his journal saying, Did my mother perhaps have a forbidding of what would happen to me? Does mother hearts really have a second sight? In April 1877, Rizal, who was then nearly 16 years old, matriculated in the University of Santo Tomas, taking the course in philosophy and letters. He enrolled in his course for two reasons. Number one, his father liked it. And number two, he was still uncertain as to what career to pursue. During his first year term on 1877-78, in the University of Santo Tomas, Rizal studied cosmology, metaphysics, theodicy, and history of philosophy. It was during the following term, on 1878 to 79, that Rizal, having received the Ateneo Rector's advice to study medicine, took up the medical course, enrolling simultaneously in the preparatory medical course and the regular first-year medical course. Another reason why he chose medicine for a career was to be able to cure his mother's growing blindness. In his first school term in the University of Santo Tomas, on 1877-78, to Rizal also studied in the Teneo. He took vocational course leading to the title of expert surveyor. The colleges for boys in Manila offered vocational courses in agriculture, commerce, mechanics, and surveying. Rizal excelled in all subjects in a surveying course in the Ateneo and passed final examination, but he was not be granted the title of surveyor because he was below at age. He had many beautiful memories and whose district professors, unlike the Dominicans, loved him and inspired him. He also continued his membership in the Marian Congressions, of which he was the secretary. Notwithstanding, his academic studies in the University of Santo Tomas and extracurricular activities in Ateneo, Rizal had ample time for love. He was a romantic dreamer who liked to sip the nectar of love. His sad experience with his first love and had made him wiser in the ways of romance. After losing Sigonda Katigbak, he paid court a young woman in Calamba. In his student remorse, he called her simply Miss L, describing as a fair with seductive and attractive eyes. Hence, her identity is lost to history. However, he gave two reasons for his change of heart, namely, the sweet memory of Segunda was still fresh in his heart, and the two, his father did not like the family of Ms. L. As his year in University of Santo Tomas, he boarded in the house of Doña Concha in Intramuros. Good morning, Doña Concha. Good morning, Jose. Can I board in your house, Doña Concha? 
Yes, of course, he said. His neighbors were Capitan Juan and Capitana Sinday with a charming daughter named Leonor. Rizal and Leonor talk of each other in the house. Nice to meet you, Leonor. Nice to meet you, Jose. I just wanted you to know that I fell in love with you as I first saw you. You're beautiful like butterflies and bloom like flowers. Thank you. You're welcome, Leonor. I want you to ask something. What is it to say? <clears throat> I want it to court you. Yes, you may Jose. Thank you, Leonor. So Jose Rizal courted Leonor Valenzuela, who was a tall girl with regal bearing. He sent her love notes in visible ink. Rizal knew his chemistry taught Orang a pet name of Leonor. The secret of reading any note written in invisible ink by heating it over the candle or lamp so that the words may appear. But Leonor and Jose did not work on their chemistry. Another romance of Jose Rizal was with another Leonor, named Leonor Rivera. Leonor Rivera was pretty girl, tender as a bedding flower with kindly wistful eyes. So both have sprung beautiful romance, they have become engaged, and Leonor signed her name as a timeless in order to camouflage their intimate relationship from their parents and friends. Good day, Miss Leonor. Same to you, sir. Mm, can I touch your eyes? Yes, sir. What is my eyes in this thing, sir? What, sir? It is okay. I just stare at you because of your beautiful eyes. Leonor Rivera have smiled. Both of them had a beautiful romance and engaged, but they did not live in married. When Rizal was a freshman medical student at the University of Santo Tomas, he experienced his first taste of Spanish brutality. One dark night in Calamba, during the summer vacation in 1878, he was walking in the street and he dimly perceived the figure of a man while passing him. Not knowing the person due to the darkness, he did not salute or nor say courteous manner. Muerto! Did you not know that we are Lieutenant? Yes. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. The street is so dark, I couldn't see you. No, it cannot be. Get him! Hey, where are you going? The voyage figure turned out to be the Lieutenant of the Guardia Civil. With a snarl, he turned upon Rizal, whipped out his word, and brutality slashed the latter in the back. The wound was not serious, but it was painful. When he recovered, Rizal reported the incident to General Primo de Rivera. But nothing came out of his complaint, because he was an Indio and the abusive lieutenant was the Spaniard. He wrote a letter to Blumentritt, saying, I went to the Captain General, but I could not obtain justice. My wound lasted two weeks. In the year 1879, the Artistico Literario of Manila held a literary contest. It offered a prize for the best poem by a native or mestizo. Rizal, who was 18 years old, submitted his poem entitled A La Juventud Filipina or To the Filipino Youth. The board of judges composed of Spaniards impressed by the Rizal poem and gave it the first prize which consisted of a silver pen, feather shaped and decorated with a gold ribbon. The first prize is those to Jose Rizal. Young Rizal was happy to win the poetry contest. He was congratulated by all his classmates, teachers in Ateneo, and by his friends and relatives. The following year, 1880, another literary contest to commemorate the fourth centennial of the death of Cervantes. Spain's glorified man of letters and famous author of Don it was open to both Filipinos and Spaniards. The judges of the contest were all Spaniards after a long and critical appraisal of entries. 
They awarded the first prize to Rizal first because of its literary superiority over the others. The Spanish object because Rizal was an Indio. For the first time in history, an Indio, a 19-year-old, excelled in the national contest, defeating several Spanish writers of his time in Manila. In summer month of May 1881, when he was still a medical student at the University of Santo Tomas, Rizal went to pilgrimage to the town of Bakil, a famous shrine of Virgen Maria de los Dolores. He was accompanied by his sisters Saturnina, Maria, and Trinidad and their female friends. They stayed at the home of Mr. and Miss Manuel Regalado, whose son Nicolas was Rizal's friend in Manila. They were fascinated by the famous Turumba, the people dancing on the streets during the procession in honor of the miraculous Berhen as they sang and danced. In Pakil, Rizal was infatuated by a pretty girl, Collegiala Vecinta Ibardo Laza, who skillfully played the harp at the Regalado home. Rizal was the champion of the Filipino students in their fights against the arrogant Spanish students who were often surpassed by the Filipinos in class works and who insultingly called their brown classmates Indio or Chongo or Bangus. Indio Chongo! Indio Chongo! Stila Bangus! Indio Chongo! Stila Bangus! Hostility between these two groups of students often exploded in angry street rumbles. Rizal participated in the student roles owing to his skill in fencing, wrestling, and indomitable courage. He distinguished himself in the student skirmishes. In one of the fierce encounters between the Filipino students and their pale-skinned detractors near the Escolta in Manila, Rizal was wounded on the head. His friends brought him, bleeding and covered with dust, to his boarding house. Casa Tomasina Leonor Rivera tenderly washed and dressed his wound. His unhappy days at the UST because of the dominant professor were hostile to him. The Filipino students were radically discriminated against by the Spaniards. I will send you to Casa. He encountered fight. Okay, I will betray him. Thanks for bringing him. You're welcome. Oh no, Jose. What happened to you? After finishing the fourth year of his medical course, Rizal decided to study in Spain. My beloved brothers and sisters, I will go to Spain. I will no longer endure this Spanish bastards' discrimination against us. Okay, brother. Just take care. We will miss you. Have a safe ride. Do not tell to our parents, especially to my beloved Yuna. Okay, brother. We will promise to keep that secret. Just take good care of yourself, Jose. At the end, Rizal's parents, Leonor and the Spanish authorities, knew nothing of his decision to go abroad in order to finish his medical studies in Spain, where the professors were more liberal than those of the University of Santo Tomas.